Aloha and good morning. Uh, my name is Lance uh, Collins. Um, I am an attorney in private practice uh, here uh, in Maui. Um, I also sit part-time as a judge uh, in the district and family courts, although I'm not going to be speaking about my experiences in, in that uh, realm today. Um, I went to St. Anthony's School uh, in Wailuku. I finished in 1996. And then I went to MCC uh, and UH. And uh, so I have a law degree. So that's how I'm able to practice law. But I also have a PhD um, uh, in um, political science from, from UH and a master's degree um, in indigenous politics. So um, I think I've been asked to to talk because some of the work I do um, has to do with environmental law. Um, some of the cases that you may be familiar with um, is uh, I represented the folks um, stop cane burning versus the Department of Health, um, which uh, in a more complicated way and was involved with the ending of uh, burning sugar cane uh, in Maui that had been a practice for about 75 years. Um, uh, other cases, uh, one that went to the U.S. Supreme Court a couple of years ago, uh, Hawaii Wildlife Fund versus County of Maui, um, that had to do with um, the county's unlawful use of injection wells without a Clean Water Act permit um, discharging into near shore waters. Actually, I also represented folks in South Maui um, who sued over the Kihei injection wells, although that settled because the Supreme Court case, basically, the county totally lost. So there wasn't a need to prosecute multiple lawsuits since they have to change what they're doing. <clears throat> um, a, a number of other cases specifically related to climate change um, involved cases with the Public Utilities Commission. Um, one was in Ray in the matter of uh, Hawaii Light and Electric Company in Ray Helco. Um, and that had to do with what was being presented as a renewable energy project on the Big Island where they chopped trees down and burned them for energy. Um, and that was apparently a that's being presented today con continuing to be presented as a renewable energy project and um, conservation groups uh, intervened in that case and challenged it. And uh, the Supreme, the Hawaii Supreme Court ruled that uh, the Public Utilities Commission has to consider the long-term and hidden impacts of fossil fuel consumption. Um, and they have to do that in renewable energy projects because just designating something as a renewable energy project could basically allow projects to have their hidden and long-term fossil fuel consumption impacts uh, hidden by just designating it as renewable energy. So they basically said that doesn't mean anything. You still have to do the analysis. Um, there's another case uh, in Ray Gas Company, and that has to do with the um, um, fossil fuel refinery um, uh, in uh, Oahu. Uh, and that in that case, the um, Hawaii Supreme Court ruled 5-0 um, that uh, the Public Utilities Commission has to consider climate change impacts to the public trust uh, resources of the state um, when it considers whatever uh, it's considering for approvals. So those are some of the kinds of cases um, that I take, uh, that I've taken. Um, I enjoy it very much. Uh, my area of law is suing the government. And so in all of those cases, we sued the government um, and won. Um, sometimes it's not, sometimes the government is involved, but it's a little more complicated. I have a case before the Hawaii Supreme Court right now um, that has to do with the longline fishing industry. Um, and they're basically uh, use of, of human trafficking and, and uh, modern slavery, but it has the consequence, the long line fishing industry has a consequence of depleting the fisheries um, in the Pacific. And so those two issues sort of intersect. And because it's almost impossible to directly uh, deal with the long line uh, fishing industry, uh, some uh, Hawaiian uh, fishermen and some conservationists got together and they basically sued the state for illegally giving fishing licenses to people who are basically not allowed to come on shore and ask for help if they have medical or legal problems. So um, it's a weird way of dealing with this issue, but uh, that's before the Hawaii Supreme Court. And we're hoping for a favorable ruling. And one of the things the Supreme Court may rule is that the state has the power to regulate the coastal waters out to the end of the Econo exclusive economic zone, um, which is, says in our state constitution, but the state doesn't act like it has that power. So uh, it's, a, it's a broad range of, of, of things that uh, I have been involved with. I enjoy it very much. It's very meaningful to me. Um, I think in a broader way, one of the questions I ask about myself and everything I do is how might one live as opposed to how should one live? Um, and so 
I feel like my work is a way of exploring um, how we can live uh, and to explore the limits of both the law and our understanding of the world. Um, and so with respect to that, the other side of that is I would challenge each of you who are interested in conservation matters to really constantly interrogate yourself about what is nature. Because for many people, nature is presented as a subjective thing that is represented in our ways of knowing, but actually it is our ways of knowing that constitute what nature is. So if you think you're protecting nature, what you're really protecting are your values about reality. Um, and so I would encourage you to interrogate yourself constantly about what are those values that underline my understanding of what I think nature is. Um, because sometimes people get this idea about what nature is and then they kind of get fanatical about it. And in that process, they disregard uh, all sorts of important values uh, and social relations uh, with, with their community and with others. So I would, would strongly recommend that you ask yourself, what is nature constantly? Uh, if you're in the, in the realm of conserving nature so that you fully you know, can be conscious of what it is that you think that you're getting involved in. So that would be my, my little bit of unsolicited advice. Um, I don't have any particular internship or opportunities for youth to get involved with to recommend, but I do strongly uh, suggest, and this is from my own experience in Maui, uh, that you get involved in Maui County Council and state legislature uh, things in whatever way is um, comfortable for you and or possibly uncomfortable for you. Uh, and also to consider, uh, you know, making signs and doing guerrilla theater and getting out and um, expressing yourself in the context of community organizing and political protest, uh, because all of those things are very important and it doesn't require an organization or a company or a government to do. And it's something that you and your friends can do um, totally based on, you know, your own, own set of values and feelings. So definitely consider that as a potential avenue to um, express yourself in the realm of conservation as a high school student. So thank you very much.